Hello friends, this is Growl. In this video, I'm going to go over my thoughts on pre-patch RestoDruid setup and gameplay. I wasn't originally planning on doing a full-on guide, but the pre-patch is here and we still don't even have a release date, so I thought it'd be a good idea to put this out there to help people who want to play some RestoDruid and pre-patch keys. As a quick disclaimer, I'm going to go over some of my favorite options and what I think of the talent build and the Azerite and Essences and stuff, but don't let that stop you from trying stuff out. This is a really really good time to be testing talents and different abilities so this is mainly meant as a guideline just to help get you started if you're not sure what direction to go with your pre-patched druid but i'd highly encourage you to be trying all the different talent options uh the the bfa specific stuff like azurite and essences don't matter a whole lot but i guess specifically with talents and stats i would encourage you to try them out for yourself and get a feel for them because you know i very well could be wrong Okay, so let's jump into talent discussion. This, I'm going to have some gameplay in the background. We might talk about it a little bit, but this is mainly just focused on, like, Druid-specific stuff. It's not really meant to be talking about Underrot strategy, since this dungeon is going away fairly soon. So, in the first row of talents, I choose Scenarian Ward. The option between Abundance, Nourish, and Scenarian Ward is there. I think Nourish is pretty underwhelming. With the changes to Regrowth, you don't really have too much of a need for, like, another single target healer like there just isn't enough single target healing i think to make nourish necessary and on top of that you already almost have that role with regrowth abundance i think will have some more value in shadowlands when there's more aoe healing to be done but in bfa i feel like there's just not as much like raw aoe throughput checks where abundance is necessary i think the convenience of just having a really strong single target hot with scenario ward uh appeals to me and that's why i've been running it the second talent row i'm running wild charge always um i don't think this one makes a huge difference but i do think wild charge is the best talent on this row just the mobility is really strong in the third talent row we have Feral Affinity versus Balance. Nobody really runs Guardian still. I made a good video talking about the differences both in damage and utility between Balance and Feral. I'd encourage you to check that video out. It also applies to Shadowland stuff as well. The very brief summary is that Feral feels better, especially in BFA dungeons, and also just does more damage. And Balance, however, gives you the ability to use Typhoon and cast at range so if you feel like you need typhoon then you're gonna have to end up running in balance but when possible i'm gonna always prefer feral still then we have the fourth talent row this is the utility row as a default i'm choosing heart of the wild here just because it's a, a damage throughput increase so unless i think i have good use of mighty bash or mass entangle i'm gonna bring heart of the wild that being said, without Night Fae Convoke, you get less value from Heart of the Wild. So in dungeons where I feel like healing is going to be harder and I'm not going to get that many opportunities to just slam DPS for 30 or 40 seconds, I've been opting to take Mighty Bash instead just for the extra interrupt. I think it's good in Underrot and Waycrest, maybe some other dungeons as well. But I would encourage you to just take whatever you prefer on this row that you think you can get the most use out of. In the fifth talent row, we have Cultivation versus Soul of the Forest. I don't really feel too strongly about this one. I think Soul of the Forest is a little bit better for burst healing, and Cultivation is better for sustained throughput. As you adventure into the Shadowlands, you'll find that Soul of the Forest is really useful because it synergizes with Convoke. However, now, especially with the probably slightly higher levels of mastery, you get pretty good value from cultivation too. It sort of just depends on your feel. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about this row and I would use whatever you feel comfortable with. Next row, we have Spring Blossoms versus Overgrowth. Overgrowth feels pretty underwhelming to me as well. The issue is it costs a decent chunk of mana and all it's really doing is applying hots. So... You usually want, like, Eflo is already a really good, efficient global, given that it lasts 30 seconds and it's applying a hot to everybody. So I don't really think you get that good efficiency out of Overgrowth anyway. And Overgrowth isn't that strong of a single target heal. 
maybe try around, maybe mess around with it and try it and see how it goes. But I think Spring Blossoms is the go-to in this row. Then we have the last row. I think Photosynthesis is the go-to here. Not much has changed, and Photosynthesis just gives you really good sustained throughput. Next, we'll talk about items. So the stat priority has changed a little bit back to sort of normal Druid levels in that item level is king. All stats are pretty good for Druid, so you don't want to be sacrificing item levels to get a specific stat. When it comes to haste, generally haste is not a very good throughput stat, and you only want to be getting enough of it to that's necessary for a good cast time and global cooldown. For me on Druid, I feel like that number is usually around 25%. Some people prefer higher or lower, but depending on your gear, I think 25% is a good benchmark. Then I'm going to start to just jam the rest of my stats in Verse and Crit. Mastery is going to be your best healing stat, but it doesn't provide any damage benefit or any benefit at all other than healing throughput. So if you don't feel like you need the extra healing, it's not going to be a stat that you want to get. I've been getting away with not running much mastery in dungeons, and I think you can like all the way up to the highest levels right now. So I, I would encourage you to try no mastery as well. But let's say you're a little bit under geared or you're struggling with some of the healing, you can just go back to the normal haste mastery and that should be really good healing throughput. Verse will give you... Verse has the worst throughput, but it adds survivability and damage. Crit is somewhere in the middle. It's not as good as, as throughput healing as mastery, but it's a little bit better than verse both for healing and damage. However, it doesn't give you that survivability benefit. So I, I think you kind of just want a little of everything with like a, a big chunk of haste and then mix between crit and burst is what I've been going for. For trinkets, I mostly run the same stuff. I swapped out one trinket for the inscription trinket, I think it is, the Highborn Compendium of Storms. It's just a really nice haste stat bonus. I think the scaling on it is just a little bit off in pre-patch it seems better than vita although not by much so if you don't want to drop the gold to buy one of these in the auction house i wouldn't worry about it as much you can just get away with using vita or dragon skill or whatever you had before for azurite i think that's gone back to normal as well so previously you had corruption stat amps so you kind of wanted to align your as right stats with your corruption for example the swirling sands helm wasn't that good because you never had crit corruption but now that you don't really care what stats you get you just want a lot of everything the swirling sands helm is actually pretty good heart of darkness is still really strong too you can see my as right in the top left i'm running the carapace chest because of the higher item level it also is pretty good for damage and then the rest of my stuff is just a mix of a couple stat traits, a high noon, and a grove tending. I think now that you don't need to stack three Heart of Darkness, I kind of wanted to swap out one piece for that high noon. And then I don't think the helm matters a whole lot. You can go with the Mott helm that I was using before, or the Swirling Sands helm is fine too. For essences, I'm not really super sure. I've been running with. Crucible Major, Formless, Ever-Rising, Tide, and Conflict. Generally, I'm just trying to get a lot of stats. I feel like there's not a lot of Majors that synergize well with Wrestler Druid. You could use something like Ever-Rising, Tide if you want a lot of healing, or World Vein even, but it doesn't really help your damage that much, and I feel like you can get away with... You can get away with healing most everything, even without it. So generally, I just run Crucible, but again, if you're if you're feeling a little bit undergeared or you're wanting some more help with your healing, you can give Everizing Tide a try or uh, like World Vein or something. So for food buff, I was using Verse Food before, and I still continue to use it. That's because if you're using Sugar Crusted Fish Feasts in Dungeons, you will get your food buff overridden anyway if you're not using a versatility food buff. So although I don't think verse food is the best, I'm using it because I need to because I use fish feasts. If you're not using fish feasts in dungeons, you can you should probably be using the 
the sausage or whatever that gives you intelligence instead. I think you're going to get better mileage from that or like even the normal feast or whatever. But if you're using fish feast, you still want to be using the versatility food. There's been a few class changes as well. I think the two really important ones are Stampeding, Roar, and Maim. So if you're playing Feral Affinity, Maim is a really, really good stun that you have. It has a 20 second cooldown. You only need to have one combo point to use it, but if you have a bunch of combo points, it's a big, long stun as well. It's really powerful for just CCing mobs, whether you need to interrupt a cast, whether you're trying to stop some melees. Having that really long stun on a healer that has a short cooldown is feels really good. And the more I the more I tried to use it, the better I liked it. So I'd encourage you to try that out. Make sure you have a good keybind for it and be trying to use it here. We'll see. I wonder if I use it here. Like you can have a lot of stuns. So for example, I you can come out of stealth with your with your rake ability and then you can also use maim if you have combo points saved up and then you can immediately bash if you're running that too and you can like four to five seconds stun three different mobs at the start of the pull and you can do that almost every pull which is not always useful but it can feel really good especially in a pull like this where there's just so much damage going out if i would have uh, used some of those stuns at the beginning it would have helped a lot so maim is really good another option is stampeding roar stampeding roar is just so good make sure you're putting that on your ui if you're not using it regularly it's a 20 second or a, sorry a two minute cooldown so you can it, in a raid you probably need to save it for specific instances but in dungeons you just want to be using this all the time you can use it to just get from point a to point b you can use it to help your tank kite for your dps you know for instance in in this boss right here, the, the upcoming boss, you can use it to help soak the, soak the ticks. In general, just make sure you're using both MAME if you have Feral Affinity and Stampeding Roar as much as possible. Get used to weaving those into your dungeon rotation because one of the things that I talk about in what separates like really good healers and medium healers is the good use of that utility. So once you're playing with people, in you know the beginning of shadowlands or in pre-patch just constantly using those roars and showing them that you're aware of all your utility your utility and you're making good use of it is uh really really good we also have cyclone i haven't really found a whole lot of uses for cyclone you can use it sometimes but it's got a long cast time and you have to be careful that you end up kind of griefing your team with it because it makes the mob like you can't damage it so like you can use it for like really niche situations i think like bolstering or for interrupting a specific cast but usually you don't want to be using it unless you really really have to there are some other like small changes as well but i think those are the the three most important ones so my overall thoughts on like sort of the meta right now for healers i think the best like all around healer in dungeons is still probably holy paladin just because their damage is insane with holy power and lights decree so holy, holy paladins are really really strong the downside is that it, they're a bit weaker for healing i think part of that is just because they're using a bunch of freaking ret traits i mean you, you know if, if they were actually gearing for good healing maybe they could do good healing but i found that druid healing seems to be a bit stronger you can't necessarily gear for that insane damage and then still put out really really strong healing druid seems like a more solid overall healer resto shaman has seemed pretty decent as well i haven't got to play any but i've watched some and the the healing throughput of it is really good priest unfortunately didn't get the the big spell changes that it needs for mythic plus like power infusion and mind soothe i think both of those abilities are past level 50 so although Dispriest is really strong in, in shadowlands right now i think it it isn't quite gonna get its light in pre-patch yet and i don't really have much to say about miss weaver unfortunately i haven't got a lot of time to try it or watch it but i don't think it's changed too much made some potion changes too that's one thing that's gotten a little taking a little bit of time for me to get used to 
So previously, as a healer, I would weave in a lot of different types of potions, whether they were utility, mana, damage. You would be using a decent amount of all of them. Now that potions share a five minute cooldown, it's pretty rare that you want to use a potion for damage just because you don't know when you're going to need mana or like a light foot or something down the line. Before, when it was only a one minute cooldown, you know you could pre-pot, you would just use it. And then as long as you knew the next minute you were safe, you'd have your potion back up in time. But now it's five minutes and you don't always know where you're going to be in five minutes. So I found myself almost never using dps pots in dungeons just because i felt like it it wasn't worth putting your your pot on cd for how little damage you would gain from it the the drinking changes are also in it's not as noticeable because in the keys that i've been doing sugar crusted fish fees still works and it will still work in pre-patch i would use those up because it looks like that's getting nerfed in Shadowlands. You're not going to be able to use those past level 50. So if you have feasts, use them up. And you probably won't care too much about the drinking changes. But it'll be noticeable in Shadowlands for sure. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about. Drinking now has sort of a ramp with its mana. In that right when you start drinking you basically get no mana. And you have to be sitting for a few seconds. Sort of like how it works in PvP. And that can be really annoying because I think what the meta was for Mythic Plus was more like you just drink for a few seconds in between every pull and you'd catch up on like you'd keep your mana at a reasonable level. But now drinking for a few seconds in between pulls gives you almost nothing. So you have to watch out for that and be ready for those changes. <laughs> I've had we've had two people die to tantrum. I'm not sure what was going on oh yeah i didn't talk about this but one of the really big changes for me was the removal of stone bark so iron bark was nerfed uh before i wasn't really sure if it was a nerf but after playing it i definitely feel like it is so the cooldown now is a minute 30 versus 60 before however it was changed in that it increases the healing on the target as well the problem is that you don't have the stone bark talent i used to run stone bark in a fair amount of dungeons for example in under rot it was especially useful for situations like kragma where you can use iron bark on every single tantrum but now that it's a minute 30 cooldown i found myself using it a lot less because i was worried about not having it full for a pull for example this is a really really nasty pull it does a lot of tank damage but i used iron bark on a on one of the tantrums and it's not up for our tank here and he's going in really heavy stagger whereas in bfa this i would have bark for this pull so it's something you have to get used to i mean a minute 30 cooldown isn't that bad when you compare it to blessing of sack from paladin or pain suppression like a minute 30 cooldown is still fine but one of the things that made druid really really strong in bfa was the minute or even shorter cooldown on on iron bark so that definitely takes some getting used to because it isn't even just the extra 30 seconds like you'd think you'd lose a little bit of uptime but you lose actually quite a bit because when you are running stone bark or even without it you don't really worry too much about your iron bark use because you can have it up for nearly every pull but now that it's a minute 30 you don't so i found myself saving it a lot instead of just using it over and over for throughput so i would like worry about what was coming next and i would know that it wasn't necessary for this pull so i just wouldn't use it for example and then it would end up sitting on cooldown for a really long time i don't think there's a whole lot more changes i'm trying to think oh yeah people are asking about tanks too i haven't got a chance to play with a whole lot of different tanks i think warrior is still decent because their azurite traits and essences are really strong even though the they definitely got neutered a little bit with their talent changes having vision of perfection or conflict major and then uh, a bunch of copies of bastion of might is really strong so i don't think pro warriors that bad brewmaster seems really really strong as well given that they get celestial brew as part of their kit so brew actually has a lot of healing right now you can see on most polls i'm actually getting out healed by the brew which 
is is pretty strong because one of Brew's strengths is that they they don't really get spiked down they just need a lot of healing but with this this rendition of Brew maybe it's just the setup that Trance has but he he hasn't seemed to need that much healing and he also like very rarely will fall over and die to damage I haven't really got a chance to play with too many tanks I was talking to Psycho a little bit about Vengeance it seems like Vengeance isn't great on uh pre-patch some of the things that they that makes them strong are their like legendaries and covenants and stuff they don't really have good azurite trades so i don't think i don't think vengeance is doing that well bear seems okay too bear is sort of the same bear isn't changed much I haven't got too much of a chance to play with blood decay either i heard blood decay didn't feel that great dorky hasn't been wanting to play blood he's been on unholy most of the week so Sounds like the changes to Blood Decay were not great. Other than that, I guess maybe I could have structured this video better. I think most of the hard parts of the dungeon are like before this, like in the in the second boss room and even the first couple pulls. So nothing more in this dungeon is is that super complicated. I'm trying to think of any more any more topics or subjects that i think about oh yeah i wanted to talk about the scaling too so i guess i haven't even talked about it yet but we're in a plus 32 under rot and spoiler the the key was timed a lot of people are wondering what what that is going on how are people are doing higher keys with no corruption the reason is that they in season three and season four of bfa they've they kicked up the scaling a lot so for example the difference between a plus 23 and a 24 and a 25 is really really high and when they remove corruption they also change the scaling back they made it a lot easier and they actually i think scaled it back a little bit too much i would say the difference is roughly three to four key levels depending on how high you go so for example this 32 i think feels pretty close to say like a 27 or a 28 it it may not be true when you're doing lower keys because it has to do with the scaling so like a 15 might still feel like a 15 there you can see i used roar on our melee dps to help them to get out of the the shockwave or the upheavals little things like that using your new utility is really really strong be on the lookout for good opportunities to do that yeah but anyway so i think the the key level scaling is off just a little bit in my opinion there's nothing wrong with that i don't think it really matters a whole lot honestly i like the scaling really small i like i i don't like when there's really big jumps between key levels because it kind of feels like it stifles progression like you do a 28 and then you're like well a 29 is impossible and you just look at the damage numbers and you know you can't do it because like the difference between a 28 and a 29 in season four of bfa was like three minutes or something so you would need to save just a tremendous amount of time to go up each key level where i kind of like the the smoother scaling even if it gets a little bit ridiculous and you start going into higher numbers i do like the the shallower is that the right word the shallower scaling i guess i can talk about add-ons a little bit i think by now most people have figured out their pre-patch add-ons but in order to get add-ons working you need to do a mix of different things don't force update your add-ons unless you have to like i logged into i logged into pre-patch without updating anything just to see what would work and what wouldn't if things don't work then go in the the twitch client or the the wow up client or whatever and update them and if they still don't work then back them up then remove them from your folder and go hunt down the shadowlands beta version and install that instead for instance, I think details I had to do that and then voodoo as well. Maybe those are actually officially updated now for pre-patch, but that's what I had to do to get them working. I got so many add-on questions <laughs> over the, the first week of pre-patch of people trying to get all their stuff working. I don't have a specific pre-patch UI, but all of my stuff, my my frames and my weak orders should still should still work just fine. And once Shadowlands goes live or shortly before it, I'll have updated frames and weak auras for all those.
that that I think about covers it. I could uh, go into de- go in depth about <laughs> explaining some of these mechanics and under rod, but I don't think it's uh, very useful. If you're looking for what routes we're doing or just how I'm healing certain bosses or what's going on, check out my my Twitch vods. We played like a very large amount over the last week. We've done every dungeon. I, I at one point we had the rank one time or level in every single dungeon so you can look up those those vods if you have questions about specific talents or uh at you know essences or anything that i'm running in those you can just dig through the vods and see that's at least what i would do when i was learning before um i think that i think that wraps it up i'm just gonna wrap the video up here i i appreciate you if you made it this far thanks for watching if you have any questions about other pre-patch stuff, uh, leave a comment on the video. Let me know, and I'll, I'll try and get this. Uh, I'll, I'll try and watch the comments a little better on this one, and I'll answer some of them just to make sure everyone's set up and doing well in pre-patch, able to test out the rest of druids. So, if there's anything that I missed, uh, check down in the comments to see if I answered it there. And uh, if not, then leave a comment yourself, and I'll try and get to it. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. Happy King, friends.